man, where do you even start here? Well, you start wherever you want. I'll, I'll follow you around. Hello, everybody. What is going on? I am Joey, and welcome to my tour of Magnus Walker's Porsche collection. I met Magnus Walker a couple months ago up at Newcomb's Ranch for the Goodbyes Breakfast Club, and he invited me to come down and film his collection. Now, his collection has been on many shows featured by many people, including Formula One driver Sebastian Vettel, and I was one of the lucky people to get an exclusive tour of his collection. So here's my video of his collection. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Do it. Come on in. Watch your step. How's your day going? Going really good. good. Thank you for having me. Did you drive down? I did not, unfortunately. Oh. He was nervous to drive downtown. Oh, come on. Don't don't worry about that. Got to experience the LA traffic for once. I hear you. This is the overflow from the garage. This is my office. That's where I do my little face mask sewing. We got out the Union Jack carpet for you right there. That's my desk. You can catch that later. Main office. This is what I would call a bit of a gallery room, just where I put stuff on the wall. For those that don't know, this is just my collection. I'm not an independent performance shop. I build for myself. I don't build customer cars. So what he's going to show you is just stuff that I've collected over the past. Come on in. Here's a wall to 277. There's a 24S motor. That'll eventually run something. Uh, 912, bunch of 924 transmissions. This essentially started out as a non 911 room, but it's sort of merged into a bit of a catch all. This is the water cooled front engine transaxle section 924, 928, 944, 968, and then 914. These are the underdog, you know, some may say unloved forgotten Porsches. For me, I'm all about variety. So Porsche just doesn't mean 911, it means everything Porsche's ever made, from the 356 all the way up to whatever the latest, greatest 992 is. For my viewers who haven't seen your collection, don't know much about you, can you explain how you started collecting cars and what's the goal of your collection? Uh, goal of my collection is variety. I fell in love with Porsche when I was 10 years old, back in 1977. I've told that story a bunch of times, but I wrote a letter to Porsche, said I wanted to design cars for you. They wrote me a letter back, say, call us when you're older. And here I am, uh, what is that, 44 years later, with a few more Porsches than I first had when I wrote that letter as a 10 year old. Second part to your question, what does Porsche mean to me or what is my collection about? It's about variety. The goal is to own one of everything Porsche's ever built. I'm not cool enough to have owned a 356 yet, but it's on the list. So what you're gonna see here is front engine, mid engine, rear engine, air and water cooled. From the 924 to the 928 to the 944 to the 968 to the 914, and then a bunch of Beatles that we like to call 911s. Nine twenty four turbo, turbo nine twenty four Carrera GT nine six four. You can take a deep dive later on and poke around that. That's perhaps my most performance oriented build to date. Finished in twenty fifteen.
is an interesting car, 73914. It's a car I took to SEMA with Mobile One in 2019. It was put together over three days with my buddy Felix Holst and myself for less than 500 bucks. There's a 67S, short wheelbase. That 2.5 twin plug motor is going in it. That dyno to about 271 horsepower. Let's take a look around this. Now, one of the things about your collection I find really cool in particular is the interiors on cars, and especially with the plaid seat inserts. When you're doing interiors, kind of do you go for the matched exterior, or is there like a certain thing that inspires each car? Or? Well, the car determines the way it goes. This for me is a streetable track car. I love tartan interiors. It's kind of a throwback to the punk rock era of the 70s, but Porsche also put a lot of tartan interiors in cars in the 70s. We'll show you that when we get into the garage. The $5,000 2004 Gen 2 996. I literally bought it for five grand. That's a whole nother story. For a 996, always going to have to ask. You got it for five grand. Yep. Was the IMS good? You know, you cannot have a conversation about 996 and you're a perfect example without someone talking about two things. IMS bearing and ugly headlights. For five grand, who cares? But to answer your question, no problem. Only maybe 10% of 996s have an IMS bearing issue, but yet everyone seems to talk about it. For five grand, that slate gray running driving car. Guy approached me and said, hey, I've got a car, I'll practically give it to you. We should go over there and take a look at the car. I go, well, what does practically give it to me mean? He goes, well, you can have it for five grand. And I said, well, does it run? He said, yes. I go, what are the issues? And I didn't mention those three little letters that you mentioned. I said, does it have any mechanical issues? He said, no. He said, it's a little ropey. I said, I'll buy it. That was it. When it arrived here, Hannah, my girlfriend said, how many miles on it? I said, I don't even know. It's a five grand 996. It's a running driving car. So don't worry about stuff like that. Here's a uh, 88 944 turbo. Bought that at the Pomona Swamp Meet a couple of years ago. Let me get you in the garage. That's where the real fun is. Man, where do you even start here? Well, you start wherever you want. I'll, I'll follow you around. I guess we'll start with this middle row here. I mean, I think what really stands out to me with the cars here is the colors. I mean, you talk about variety, like you said, pretty much any Porsche color, it's here. What's your favorite color? I'm a bit of a blue guy. Okay. And so obviously Porsche's done quite a few blues. Yeah, yeah go check that one out. That's a 76 Euro Turbo, three liter. That was actually Swiss delivery, sunroof delete, Minerva blue, white interior. And this is the first car that ever got my first set of outlaw wheels. So zooming down on those, those were debuted in 2014. So this is turbo row. That's a 75 left-hand drive turbo. That's a right-hand drive 75 turbo. When you think of Porsche, the poster on the wall, you probably have maybe a turbo. That came out in 1975. Porsche only built 284 turbos that year. Only 32 of them are right-hand drive. That's one of 32. So left-hand drive, ice cream metallic. This one's pretty unique. It's the first US production turbo ever sold, documented by the museum. Lifelong LA car, I'm the fourth owner. So, first US production turbo sold right here. Wow. 45 years ago, the birth of the legend. Now, you mentioned the right-hand drive car. So when yeah. you look at your car, I'm assuming you look all over the world? Yeah, I mean, that car I bought in Sydney, Australia, the 924 Carrera GT, I also bought in Australia. So, with that World Wide Web, when you sat at home chasing cars, it doesn't really matter where they are for me. 77 turbo, this one's kind of interesting. We're talking about tartan interiors. You Americans call them plaid. But that is factory interior, ice cream metallic, olive leather, black watch, green tone. This is quite a rare spec. Kind of rare. Yeah. 
Here's a little bit of useful or useless information. If you ever want to know the difference between a 76 Turbo Carrera tail and a 76 Turbo tail from 75, small grill, 1975, bigger grill, 1976. Obviously these are interchangeable. When the Turbo debuted in 76, in the US market, they actually called it a Turbo Carrera. That was for two years. In the rest of the world, they just call them turbos. 75, small grill, 76, big grill. Of course, this all changed in 78 when the intercooler came in and the turbo went to 3.3 liter, different tech. Now, this red car really yeah. stands out to me. Tell me about this one. 1974 Slant Nose 911 that I was chasing. I was on a quest to find a Slant Nose. First Porsche I ever bought back in 1992 was a Slant Nose Carrera on a 74 911. And that to me represented personal achievement, dream come true. Quite a few years later, I ended up finding another 1974 911 Carrera with a wide bodied slant nose conversion that was put on sometime in the late 90s. So 1974 body, well 1974 chassis, later body with a 27 RS uh, MFI spec motor built on a 73E case. Right now it's kind of all show no go because it needs a big turbo to actually make it go as fast as it looks. But I think with this car, like you said, all show, no go. I mean, you just look at the body style of the slant nose. It is just, I mean, it really stands out. I mean, that rear wing in particular, the massive rear fenders, and then obviously the slant nose on the front. For most people, when they think of a 911, they do not think of a slant nose. Well, you either love them or hate them. It kind of depends what area. If you grew up in the, I don't know, 70s, 80s, watch Miami Vice, you probably saw a lot of slant nose cars. You know, this is more of the, Moby Dick 935 inspired street Frankenstein slant nose. Yeah, with this one you could definitely see a lot of 935, which 935 is such an amazing car. Yeah, and then next to it, one of my favorites, my 67S. One time I had five of these, I'm now down to two. But if you notice, tartan interior. Next to it, King of the Hill, almost 20 years ago, 996 GT2. Next to that, the beginning of the water cooled era. Vasicki cult for you guys that speak German. Fried egg headlights. This is a great way to show Gen 1, Gen 2. You know, so back to can't have a conversation with 996 without people talking about two things. The second thing they all talk about, ugly headlights. Personally, I don't mind them at all. No one seems to mind this headlight when it's on a GT1. But put it on a GT2, everyone hates it. But for me, when you're driving, you don't even see them. Doesn't matter. For me personally, Gen 1, I think, looks way better than Gen 2. I would definitely agree with you, and I have a 99 Boxer, so I all exactly about the Exactly the same headlamp. thing. But one of the things about the 996 is I love that no one ever seems to point out is the front fenders. Yeah. When yeah. Especially when you're sitting from the driver's seat and you look at them, just so cool. And I actually think the 996 is a very underrated 911, because once you're actually driving it, it's such a great car. Well, it's the beginning of a new era, and you are right, undervalued, underappreciated. Maybe Porsche shot himself in the foot a little bit by sharing this component with the car that you turned up in, the Gen 1 99 Boxster. It's because a lot of people thought, well, why is the 911 sharing the same components as the entry level Boxster? And that was why they tried to move away from it. But you are correct, awesome car, drives really, really well. This has the 3.4 liter motor in it, aero kit. Next to it, one of my faves, 76 Carrera. This is Porsche's last built, MFI car, factory sunroof delete, limited slip, same motor that you have in the iconic 73 RS Carrera, the 911-8327 MFI RS spec motor, putting out about 210 horsepower. One of my faves right here, this is the 310th 911 ever built, pretty significant car, one of the first dozen cars delivered to Brumos Porsche in Florida, car number 310, 310th 911 ever built. Sort of a streetable, uh, rally style car. So that basically covers the second and third row. First row is one of my faves, 996 uh, 2004 GT3. Next to it, my art car, 1995 993. The only 993 I've ever owned. Another one of my faves, Irish Green, 1966 911. I've owned a lot of short wheelbase cars. My fave of all faves, 1971 911T, the car that I call 277. 277 is just a random number. I bought that car at Pomona Swamp Meet back in 1999, so I've owned it 22 years. 
as the license plate says it is a 71T when I put that plate on the car it had a 24S motor in it apparently it has a 2.8 twin plug motor in it but anyway bought at the promoter swap meet 22 years ago turns 50 this year it's a car I'm most comfortable in it's a car I've done all my track days in it's a car I'm sort of featured in need for speed in there's a few articles about it out there online so that's a brief story on 277 and then next to it the right hand drive copper brown metallic 75 turbo I was gonna say the brown on tan spec you don't see often but on a turbo with the y body it looks so yeah. great pretty understated but yet stands out tell the story about the building because most collectors keep their cars in a garage magnus explain yours well step back take a look at it built in 1902 26,000 square feet, two-story brick building, former industrial space in the Arts District in downtown LA. That's my garage. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a huge thank you to Magnus Walker for showing me his collection because he is one of the biggest names in the Porsche world, not just Porsche world, the car world and such a unique guy. And I mean, just, I can't thank you enough. Well, you're too kind, appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping by and check it out on the YouTube channel. Exactly. Cheers and rock on. Oh,